This is the London Freedom Radio Station calling from the bondage of heavy taxation, higher train fares and television. I proclaim for a change a state of just fancy. Hello, and welcome to our second demonstration rally against the tyrannies of our time. Look what they have done to us, my friends. Raised our salaries to such a pitch that with so many consumer goods to choose from, we have to spend every penny we earn. So that when it comes to spending the time saved by our washing machines and vacuum cleaners, having no money, we are forced to go out and work overtime to kill time. They've got us where they want us. Who are they exactly? Governments, employers, civil servants, or a crafty conspiracy of all three? This week the Just Fancy cast went out and about to try to settle this age-old mystery. Denise Breyer reports from a badminton shuttlecock factory at Slough. But surely there may be a good reason why you can't have tea at half past three and four. Oh, they've got an answer, all right. Yeah, they got an answer for everything. Here, here. <laughs> well, of course they flipping have. Yeah. Of course they have. Otherwise they wouldn't be where they was, would they? No, yeah. of course they wouldn't. Uh, no, uh, but who are they? Yeah, who are they? Yes. Well, what do you mean, who are they? Well, are they anyone definite? Politicians or your union yeah. officials? Or, or... Don't talk about the Badminton Channel Conquest Union, please. Uh, yeah, that's a proper farce, eh? Yeah, they've got it all sewn up. Yeah, yeah. All they want is reds in the top places. That's all they think about. Yeah, yeah. so then yeah. they get the stranglehold on the old shuttlecock output. Yeah, uh, right. uh, by they, you mean the reds want reds in the top places? Yeah. No, 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 no. They no. want them in there so they can discredit the union. Well, of course they do. Yeah. Oh. They'd have the reds out if that suited their book. Yeah, well, they've got it all buttoned up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, as far as Slough is concerned, they seem to be everywhere, don't they? To the left and the right. Do they work hand in glove? Derek Geiler asked Professor Paul Slaub of the Belgrade Institute of Industrial and Economic Psychology. Well, now, Professor Slaub, how would you define they? Well. <laughs> They are not food trains. Not like uh, the Yeti. Huh? <laughs> uh, not uh, footprints like the Yeti. No, no, no. no Mr. Luger. But mankind always are having good skip. Why, Bing Boy? Hmm? He has always to blame uh, at the back the father figure. The father figure? Uh, a scapegoat, uh, a whipping boy. Mm. Yes, always. It is hormone, uh, uh, nurture. Human nature, yes, yes. Why do they always engage people who can't speak English? Mm. <clears throat> but uh, who are they? Uh, no one? Just an excuse? Yes. They are the verboten dwartings in the hormone subconscious. I would like to say more to you, Mr. Guilla, but I have to say what they tell me. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. Uh, the forbidden, the thwarting in the human subconscious, yes. Well, thank you, Professor Slaub. Well, there's the considered opinion of the psychologist. They don't exist at all. No. In our Just Fancy studio, we have Miss Forbes Hamilton, who claims first-hand knowledge of them. Uh, uh, do you... Um mean that you have actually seen them, uh, Mrs. Forbes Hamilton? Uh, no, I don't say that. But what I do say in my book, and I have been on the track of them for over 15 years, is that they are a definite secret society of fanatics of all classes, bound together by a common purpose to aggravate the human race. Well, it's not possible. <laughs> you're, you're, you're joking, aren't you? I assure you, Mr. Kenner, that this is a very real... Connor, 
uh, Kenneth Connor. Mr. Connor's Kenner, yes, that we are so concerned with the forces of capitalism and communism that they, being universal, stateless, and classless, will eventually, if not checked, make mincemeat of both left and right for their destructive purposes. But uh, have you any proof that they are a worldwide organization? Well, we have the following tape recording from a microphone concealed at great personal risk in what we are almost sure is the British headquarters of they. Listen. What is your profession? I am a high civil servant directly responsible for the inland revenue returns. If received into they, do you agree to uphold and further their unwritten constitution? I do. Then hold the red tape up in your right hand and repeat the special oath for inland revenue officials. I swear to make forms more and more complicated so that taxpayers shall not only have to engage specialist accountants to decipher them, but those accountants will also have to engage super specialist accountants. And then just as they are all beginning to see a glimmer of light, I will bring my best efforts to bear to alter things again so that everyone is in perplexed and suicidal confusion if cornered, I will pass the buck to them. There you are. That's one. We only managed to pick up the end of the oath of another member. Listen to this. Furthermore, while examining tickets, I will frown so hard at those sitting in first-class compartments that even those in order to be there shall think twice about making a dash for it. If cornered, I will pass the buck to them. So help me, Billsy Bub. That's pronounced B Elzebub. Oh, I've never been there. Now, are you convinced? Well, it's certainly given us food for thought. And thank you very, very much for putting us in the picture, Miss Forbes Hamilton. It's been a pleasure. Anything that'll cut their corns from. Good luck. Whew. Well, that's certainly shaken me. <laughs> do, do you think it could possibly be true? I mean, they are organized to persecute us? Mm. Well, what do you think, Pearl? <laughs> They certainly know how to keep undercover. Yeah. Ah, but that's what they both promised in that recording. Yes, they did, didn't they? Yes, yeah. they said when cornered, they promised to pass the buck mm. to them. Exactly. Mm. Oh, look out. Here comes our producer. Right. <clears throat> uh, anything wrong, Charles? Um, no, no, it's all very interesting. But um, don't you think we ought to be getting on with the programme now? Hmm? Oh, yes. yes. Uh, do you believe they are an antisocial force, Charles? Hmm? Oh, I say, that's a bit tall, isn't it, Eric? Uh, yes, but... Uh, well, I mean, you're in a position of power as a producer, and once or twice, I don't want to harp, Charles, but <laughs> you have been a bit inclined to make us, you know, feel on the other side of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they are always on at us producers, you know. I mean, it's not my fault. I mean, they kick us around like nobody's business. <clears throat> yes, 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 well, um... <clears throat> I suppose we'd better ask uh, Peter Akers to play. All right, Peter? Yes, they make me sick. Tycoons whose greedy, flabby hands have almost closed around the neck of entertainment work on the age-old disastrous principle of giving the public what it wants. The truth is, of course, that the mass public has no idea what it wants for more than a week or two. I mean, you no sooner build them bowling alleys, they want bingo. 
You no sooner engage the top recording star for them at a prime minister's salary than they decide that she's had it and that, of course, what they really wanted to listen to was the sweet sound of stock cars crashing into one another, preferably with the driver still inside. But there is one artist they've always been faithful to, themselves. This first became apparent to showmen a long time ago during the decline of the golden age of the music hall. Well, it went a bad first half, I suppose. Uh, did you like it, Molly? I. Uh... It wasn't bad, Stan. Not bad. Well, that Harry Tate were a bit comical, weren't he? Uh, well, you didn't laugh. I was watching you. And I was watching the audience and all, and they wasn't laughing either. Oh, well, no, you weren't that comical, but uh, I've seen worse. Yeah. Do you get bored just sitting here week after week? I mean, do I ever feel like doing out, Stan? Molly, you can't do out here. This isn't the Bioscore Blast. Oh, you. I mean, don't you want to get up there on stage and do out? Oh, well, I sometimes think I could take the part as well as some of them, eh? Oh, well, I, I tell you, I'm sure I could. <laughs> 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 yeah. Who's this tourist here? Coming on now. Uh, number 11, <laughs> Tommy Bullock. Yeah, Tom, that's right. Never heard of him. No. <laughs> hey, listen. A fat lady and a thin lady, smoking cigarettes. Who finishes first? The fat lady, of course. <laughs> she takes bigger drawers. <laughs> Have you got I don't it? think bigger much drawers? of it. Oh, no, I could do better than that myself. <laughs> right now, a little song entitled, She were only the town clerk's daughter, but she let the borough surveyor. <laughs> he's pleased with himself, <laughs> isn't he? Now, he is an old. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Put me out, John. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, what the heck's this funny? Kebabs, kebabs, and carrots. Oh, come on in. Carrots, kebabs, and kebabs. Oh, Beautiful off. flowers. Here, oh, here oh, they're throwing things at him. Beautiful flowers yeah. at our love show. You've brought some tomatoes, too, haven't you? And I've got some ripe oh, pears. Oh, oh, come on, then, Lord. John Let's people. open up. Hey, come on, they do. Rhododendrons. And hey, that was a shot, Stan. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not a darts <laughs> champion for that, you know. <laughs> but oh, I'm well, rather Oh, well, I'm enjoying this. A nice this. Of beef with and So you see, that tragic year saw the discovery of audience participation, which, of course, meant that entertainment could never be quite the same again. The audience could never again be left out. As witness, I want to be an actor. Carol Levis's discoveries, opportunity knocks and so on. But these were special shows. Now it seems that if we go on like this, the public will insist on invading territory hitherto sacred to the professional performer. Yes, I'm afraid even the old Dick may have to come to terms. Did you see Gielgud's Hamlet, Stan? Uh, no, that's uh, before my time, oh. you know. I saw Ali Guinness's... He was very conventional, just stuck to the script like, you know. Oh, dear. I've never heard of tonight's Hamlet, I must be honest. But then I don't look at TV. I'm a highbrow. Oh, well, I haven't been to the Vic for ages. Shh. Here comes Hamlet now. Oh, yes. Here's Hamlet. Yeah, but wait a minute. He's with a man wearing an Edwardian suit. Well, I expect he wrote in. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, my friends. Well, my friends, it's grand to be back again, once again in my favorite theater, the Old Vic, once again in this role. And I won't waste any more of your time, but we'll get straight into the show, shall we, with our very first contestant. So, are we all set? John Ford of Saffron Walden, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, John. Here's a young man with a lovely smile, John. Keep that on your face, and I hope that when you leave this place tonight, the old Vic, you will still have that smile for a very good reason, John. <laughs> well, now, here we go. To be or not to be, that is the question. Yes, uh, to with be the... or not to be what, please? Yeah, no, not yet. Well, it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. Um, well, would you mind repeating the question again, please? We haven't come to it yet, John. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia. 
Yeah, so come on, my friends, and give her a real old big welcome as only you can. <laughs> Hello, darling, and it's lovely to have you once again on our show. <laughs> well, now, thank you, thank you, thank you. Nymph, in thy horizons be all my sins remembered. And the first half of the question is coming up right now, John. Right, dear? <laughs> Good, my lord. How does your honor for this many a day? It's all yours, John. Complete the line. Oh, um, how does your honor for this, um, um... Many a day. I humbly thank you. Um, how does it... No? Well, well. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> uh, one more, and, uh... Well. <laughs> well, well. Uh, well, um... Three wells! He has completed the barge line, and that oh. is the correct answer. I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and John Ford of Saffron Walden, the washing machine, tis thine. I'd like to get into the Merchant of Venice. I know that one. Well, right in. Mind, the prizes are bigger on the less known ones, like uh, Timon of Athens. Of course, there can be only one end to all this. The public loves audience participation so much. Oh, why not bundle them all together in Wembley Stadium and let them do the whole show? Now for our final contest. On my right, we have the Sit Cup Slayers with swords and shields against the Streatham Slaughterers with triders and nets. This contest will be for 10 minutes, or until there are no survivors on either side. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> This will, of course, be entirely audience participation. The encouragement you heard being given was, of course, by an audience consisting entirely of out-of-work performers. For those joining our weekly serial drama for the first time, our two old friends, reunited in London after a year's absence by one in Australia, are facing their very first morning together in the great city. Yes, well, they do you a very good breakfast. Here at the Queen Athelberger's Hotel, don't they? Oh, well, not bad. My uh, haddock was a bit yellow looking. Yes, well, haddock is a yellow fish. Well, I, I know that, but uh, there's a yellow and a yellow. <laughs> oh, my sausage was beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I should give the haddock the bygone tomorrow. <clears throat> What did you say? Hmm? Yeah, I say haddock. Yeah. 
Give it a miss. Tomorrow. Hmm. I thought you said uh, fly blow or something. Fly blow? My goodness, let's hope not. Uh, uh, hmm? uh, oh, uh, the go by, I said. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Give it the go by. Hmm. No, you didn't. Uh, no, you... Well, now, look, as uh, we've decided to stay in London, uh, what are we going to do this morning, then, old friend? Oh, well, uh, anything. I'm game. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you're rascal, you. <laughs> yes, well, now, have you ever seen the uh, changing of the guard? Oh, yes, rather. I know. The Bigo. What are you talking about? Well, that's what you said. <laughs> Give it the bygo. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Australia's made you go all muddly, like me. Yes, well, 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 don't let's get involved in our old quibbling. <laughs> oh, I'm not quibbling. I just said, you know. Yes, you said, you said, you just yes, said. Yes. Well, uh, in Australia, you know, oh, we had a oh. fish, something akin oh. to a haddock. Australia. Uh, which they caught off the Great Barrier Reef. Oh. Hmm. Yes, the name was... Um... Yeah. Well, we never saw a haddock at Reading mm. at uh, uh, Corders, you An know. An Aboriginal oh, name. Uh, Jack at the Havis Bacon. <laughs> what a blue or some such mm. name. His lordship is very fussy. No oh. matter. It wasn't bad. <laughs> it, hmm? I say it wasn't bad. Uh, no, no, no. I, I quite like bacon, you know. You quite like bacon? Hmm? Yes, I oh. see. <coughs> oh. uh, some more uh, toast for you, gentlemen? Oh, oh. must be. <laughs> there you are, lad. <laughs> uh, no, 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 thank you. No. Oh, a little more uh, hot water for you, sir. Uh, hmm? He's asking yeah. you, old friend. Oh. Yes. You don't want any more tea, do you? Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, no, thank you, Jack. Uh, uh, Carter? Oh, uh, Mush Pratt, so... Uh, uh, Mush Pratt. <laughs> uh, I, I say, old chap, the, uh, your haddock was a bit yellow this morning, wasn't it? Oh, oh well, I'm very, very sorry to oh. hear that, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, would you... Uh, would you give me to ask the chef to look you out to uh, another piece? Oh, oh, I see. I oh, don't well. think he wants any more. Hmm? We were just uh, debating what to do this morning, you know, Musprat, in the great city. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, um, have you seen a changing of the guard? Uh, no. Now that is a good idea. Uh, yeah. well, there's the zoo. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the zoo. Oh, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, there's my favourite haunt, the Imperial uh, War Museum, you know. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Well, where is that, then, Mossbrot? Oh, yes, well, not in it. So, let me see. It's between oh. the Lambeth Bridge and the, um, well, you know, the elephant. And elephants? Oh, yes. I, I haven't been to the zoo since, uh, oh, now, let me think. Oh, That's going back, uh... Just after the war. Of course, it's a <laughs> bit hard to find, really, you know, but it's well worth the oh. trouble. Well, now, that used to be in Regent's Park, I think. What, the Imperial War Museum? Uh, what? Well, uh, you mean the zoo, sir, don't you? Yeah. Oh, me? No, 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 not you, sir. No, no, uh, you didn't mean the zoo. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 yeah, well, uh, the Imperial War Museum is near Old Bedlam. Old Bedlam? Oh. Yes. Uh, and I bet you a sovereign that I'm right, you yes, say. Yes, uh, I believe a gentleman is right, uh, sir. I think you are, yes. It was moved from somewhere. Yes, I... yes. Well, we might try the Wimperial Mon Museum. Uh, well, uh, why not, sir? What? If I what? can help you any more, sir, I shall be on lounge duty this morning. And, uh, oh. Yes, this afternoon, so I'm off. Oh, good, good, good. Oh. good. Oh. Well, that'll, that'll do you good, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, I hope so, sir. <laughs> I shall just have a little shut eye, and then I shall go to another one of my favourite haunts. <laughs> a ship's compasser on the Chelsea Embankment. Oh. <laughs> well, is that a tavern, Muskrat? A uh, Muskrat? Well, it's the best public house in London, sir, in my very humble opinion. Yeah, I say, if you happen to be that way this evening, gentlemen, I, I'd be very happy to buy you both a, a, a snifter. 
<laughs> Just for old time's sake. Oh, well, now, that's very civil of you, my boy. Yes. Well, I suppose I'd better go, sir, and keep the peace with Mr. Hoskins now. I'll uh, see you later then, perhaps, gentlemen, no, and I... Oh, yes. uh, you're laughing, yeah. are you? Yes, yes. 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 Uh, he's a very good chap, you know, oh, in, yes. his, in his way. Yes, yes. 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 I couldn't quite... Uh, what did he want to do uh, for us? Oh, buy us a drink this evening. Oh. Yes. Um, mm. A drifter or something. Oh. Uh, oh, well, I didn't uh, quite catch the... Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, the Chelsea Compass, I think you said. Uh, uh, did he? Yes. Of course, uh, you know, uh, when I went to the zoo just after the war, I took my old father. Your father? Man alive, you told me once that he died in 1903. Yes, that's right, just after the war. And, and the trip to the zoo, that was the last thing he did. <laughs> ah, the poor old soul, yes. It, it, it was very crowded. Even then, you know. Was it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Crowded. Well, I know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit blustery today. Uh, for the zoo. A bit. A, a bit, bit, yes. Mm. I don't know about the Imperial War Museum. Uh, no, well, we could uh, try that, I suppose, you know. Uh, sometime. Sometime, yes. Well, mm. what, what do you want to do then? Come on, I mean, we said we'd stay and see a bit of life in London, and well, I'll do whatever you'd like to do. Oh, well, you, you... Put me in a bit of a... Uh, <laughs> I feel a bit of an old uh, stick in the mud. Uh, I, I, I'd like just to chat. Sit here and chat? Yeah. Uh, about Australia? Uh, oh, uh, well, uh, a bit. Uh, and um, Reading, you know, and... One thing and another? Well, then that's fine for the first day, yes. I mean, sitting in the lounge, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's uh, very warm for your legs. <laughs> Have you noticed oh, that? <laughs> it was glorious last night. Uh, and it's <laughs> terribly crowded in the mornings, you know, London. Oh, oh. yes, you can't do uh, this like... And then after lunch, you know, we'll uh, have our... Um, <laughs> Uh, Forty winks, and then this evening, <laughs> why don't we cut a dash? Uh, where? Yeah. Hmm? Well, with young uh, Chelsea on the most plat uh, on the um, uh, uh, embankment uh, with the most plat at, at the ship's compass. Uh, you villain! You villain! <laughs> <laughs> uh, night bird! Eh? <laughs> oh my God! <word. laughs> yes, you are. I know you. <laughs> Well, now, let's uh, go into the warm, shall we? Yes. yes. Come on. Yes. <laughs> I, oh, that's it. Easy said than done these days, you know? Yes. Ooh. That's right. Gotcha. You know. uh, 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 don't forget your stick. Yes. Your, your uh, stick. You're lost with that. Oh, lost, yes, lost. <laughs> Where did you go? Where did you go? Yeah. Oh. They uh, had a very good zoo in Sydney, you know. There's, a, uh, there's nothing in Reading, you know. Tarragona Park, they call it. Oh, a blessed biscuit, seven. Dingles, wallabies. And there it goes again. The second programme sadly whisked away into the crowded airspace of posterity. As always in this life, another lot will come into the loudspeakers next week, we hope, with the old friends and one or two new ones. So do please join us if you can bear to tear yourselves away from the westerns and finer soak the bath sorts with the built-in foot tonic. Until then, from all of us, goodbye. 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 With Eric Barker in that edition of Just Fancy were Kenneth Connor, Derek Geiler, Pearl Hackney and Denise Breyer. 
The script was written by Eric Barker. The music was under the direction of Peter Ekester, and the programme was produced by Charles Maxwell. Thank you.